So go ahead and read it. No, I don't remember to actually doing this one. So tell me what your first step's going to be. Um, so I would um, look at this right here. Yeah. Okay. How many survey respondents are there? Uh, 310. Okay. What should your next step be? Uh, multiplying 19% by 310. Do that in your calculator. Tell me what you get. Okay. Uh, 58.9. What's the answer? Um, male geometry. Okay. All right. Let's go on. Hold on. Let me uh, scroll down so we get a little more length here. And let me also expand that a little bit. Make it a little bigger. Yeah. And go a lot bigger. All right, go ahead and read that. Oh, uh, okay. <clears throat> okay. Now, before yeah. you do anything else, let's talk about this problem. <clears throat> okay. You can write anything you want in the test booklet, okay? So you can go through and underline stuff. For example, nearest inch, 21 brown bullhead. Outlying measurement, 24 inches is an error. <coughs> Things like that. Okay? And that helps you a lot when you go to figure out stuff. Okay? So which will change the most if <clears throat> the 24-inch measurement is removed? So we look at this list of statistical data, and if we remove that one, which changes the most, the mean, the median, the range, or they will all change by the same amount? Um, I think um, the mean will change the most. The mean will certainly change a lot because there's a huge difference between those two numbers right there. Yeah. Whereas the median is the middle number. And the middle number looks to be... So taking out the 24 won't change the middle number. It'll still be 12. So, mm -hmm. so far, the mean by a lot. Range. Yeah. Change will change quite a bit also. Instead of going from 8 to 24, which is a range of 16, you're not going to go mm -hmm. from 8 to 16, which is a range of 8. So which will change the most? Wow. Well, let's see. The, the mean the mean's not going to change by 8. Because the mean uh, is all of these numbers added together, added, yeah. divided by uh, 21. 
Yeah. So the mean is going to change. If I remove the 24, then I'm removing 8 from the total, but I'm dividing by 21, so I'm barely going to move the mean. I'm certain yeah. the mean is going to move more than the median, but the range will move the most. It'll move most. by 8. Yeah. Now, yeah, they were a little unspecific, and when they said uh, most, that's not a good mathematical term, because they didn't say the most absolute value move or the percentage move, they didn't specify, but with either one, the range changes the most. Okay. <coughs> Definitely getting, yeah, they like these statistics. You, you just have to know what the mean, median, and range are, really. Yeah. Make sure it's you pretty easy. For all of those. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> My voice, voice is hoarse. Everybody's getting sick now. No, I've just been working a lot lately. Uh <laughs> I hope I'm not getting sick. <laughs> yeah, no, that wouldn't have been good. I into a Walgreens the other day, and the girl at the counter had a mask on, and in the yeah. 60 seconds I was there, she coughed about 15 times and sneezed a couple times. I oh, my God. To say, lady, you don't need to be here at Walgreens. You need to be in a hospital. Like you need to go home. Like, geez. Yeah, at least. If not yeah. for your own sake. Can't believe they actually let her work. For her sake. I was pissed that I had to be around her. Yeah. I mean, it may, may make me sound cruel, but, I mean, she was. Still, the, I mean, it's true. She was the one that probably had the flu. What the hell is she doing? Yeah. Oh, my God. I cannot believe they let her do that. I couldn't either. They must have had a lot of people calling in sick, and she was the last one willing to come in. Yeah. Yeah, maybe probably. <laughs> kind of a situation. All right, let's see. Questions 15 and 16 refer to this chart. Okay. It's going to be a little tricky. Let me get 15 on there and then minimize everything so that we can see everything like that. Now, I also, have, I also have another question real quick. Go ahead. Um, I didn't know if you knew anything about this part of the SAT, but um, for the, like, a, do you know about the optional essay? I do. Is, is that something, like, you would recommend to people to take? At what year are you in high school? Uh, junior. Okay. Definitely want to take it at least once, and then here's why. Okay. Because... You don't know where you're going to go to college yet, correct? Mm -hmm. You may end up wanting to go to college at a school that wants the essay. They want you to post an essay. Now, I don't know what percentage of colleges require it and what don't, but some do. And the thing is, is that you cannot go in and just take the essay all by itself. You have to take the entire test to take the essay. So you don't mm. want to find yourself in a situation in uh, January of your senior year where, oh, I found a perfect school, they've accepted me, but they want me to take the essay. That means you got to go back mm -hmm. and take the entire SAT test. So post an essay as soon as possible, and you can always redo it. In other words, if you take it as a junior, do an essay. If you get a horrible score, then plan on taking it again in your fall year as a senior. Okay. I would definitely recommend do not report your scores to the colleges you are interested in until after you've seen your scores. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, I mean, I've already... I've. <clears throat> Writing is one of my stronger areas anyways, uh -huh. so my dad was telling me that, yeah, you might just want to be able to go ahead and take it in. Well, here's the thing. It costs you an extra 10 bucks 
to not report your scores. In other words, yeah. let's say you get a good score and you say, okay, this is a great score. I want to report this. Cost you $10 to do it. Mm -hmm. As opposed to automatically reporting them and you take the test three times and you get, you know, 550, 650, 700 on your math, you want to report the 700 only. You mm -hmm. want to report the 650 or the 550. So there's right. an advantage in not reporting your scores until you've taken the test as many times as you want to take it and then picking your best score and saying, <laughs> okay, this is the one I want to report. The colleges will never see your bad score or your other score. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea, yeah. Considering how cheap it is to do it that way, I would do yeah, it. Yeah, sounds And also, yeah. sure. uh, I believe, I, I hope SAT is the same as ACT, but you can have mm -hmm. them send you the results. I don't know if SAT does that. I have to find out. Okay. I know ACT, if yeah. you pay an extra 20 bucks, they will send you uh, a result showing you which questions you missed, which allows you to focus on your weaknesses, which is what you want to mm -hmm. do. That's the whole key. Yeah, for sure. In terms of yeah. getting a good score on this test, as we go through it, what I'm trying to find out is your weaknesses. And when I mm -hmm. do, then I take, you know, 10 minutes and try to review that particular subject. Right. Okay. Uh, is the, uh, with the, S, with the ACT, um, is, how much science is there with that uh, exam? None. None? None. Oh, wow. The science is called science, but it's not really science. What it is, is reading. It's technical reading. In other words, you're oh, okay. reading about passages that are about scientific material, but you mm -hmm. don't need any knowledge at all in science. What you need to be able to do is comprehend what you're reading. Now, science also has a lot of charts, graphs, and tables. Where there's not a lot of reading, there's interpretation. In other words, this question 15 and 16 that we're about to do, that's kind of a question that you would see on the science exam. They're giving us a graph and they want to interpret, they want us to interpret it. So what you need to be able to do is read the title, read the horizontal axis, read the vertical axis and figure out exactly what it is they're showing you. Okay. So let's look at question 15. What does the C intercept represent in this graph? After you've read the title, the horizontal, and the vertical, what does the C intercept represent? Uh, D. No, it's actually the initial cost of renting the boat. Is it? Well, no. Why, why is it an initial? The, the C intercept is when time is zero, correct? Yeah. So even if you only rent the boat for 10 minutes, you're going to pay at least $5. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. If you rent the boat for one hour, you're going to pay eight bucks. If you rent the, do the boat for two hours, you're going to pay $11. Okay. So make sure you understand how to read this graph. Okay. okay. And so what's normally called the y-intercept, yeah. because normally the vertical axis is the y-axis, well, in this particular case, it's not. It's the C-axis for cost. And the horizontal axis is not the X-axis. It's the H-axis for hours. Okay. Okay, so now we look at question 16. 
also refers to that graph. Now, um, question 15 could easily have been a science question. Okay. Question 16, maybe not so much. This is more math. Which one looks like y equals mx plus b? You're looking at a straight line, correct? <clears throat> mm -hmm. So the yeah. equation of that line can uh, be in y equal mx plus b format. It should be. You you can do it. The b is 5, right? Yeah. Because all you need to do is figure out the slope. I see. What's the slope of that line? Um, B equals five. Yeah. Tell me what the slope is. Slope is rise over run. So mm -hmm. going from this point, you can go from any two points you want, but those two points will work just fine. What's the rise? Uh, three. What's the run? Four. All right. There's your M. There's your B. We're looking for Y equal MX plus B. So it's three-fourths X plus five. That's Y. But we don't have Y. We have C equals three-fourths. And instead of X, we have H. So that should be our answer. Bingo. But notice you could use a lot of shortcuts to get this quicker than it took me to explain it. In other words, you're looking for y equal mx plus b, and you can see that b is 5. Therefore, that's not right. That's not right. There's only two answers that have plus 5. Mm -hmm. Now, the only difference yeah. between these two answers is the slope. Well, 3 right. is a pretty steep slope. 3 is up 3 over 1. So 3 is a slope like that. That is steep. Okay? This isn't mm -hmm. that steep. You can see that it's not that steep. So mm -hmm. if you had, you know, 3 seconds to guess, guess that one. That's a flatter slope. That is close to 1. That slope looks like it's close to one. Okay. Okay? Yeah. All right, let's go to 17. Now, these are definitely going to be middle to hard. And let me just look at it before we spend our time on it. Yeah, no, this is a good one. Should be able to figure this out. Okay. I don't think it's a hard problem. Look at what okay. you look at yeah. what the horizontal axis is. Label, yeah, yeah. And look at what the label on the vertical axis is. Okay. Now, also look at y equals f of x. Mm -hmm. So what is the value of x where the value of y is at its minimum? Let's say what? Um, made of two. Read that grid. 
Right there is where y is at its minimum, correct? Yeah. What's the x value there? Oh. Uh, three. Negative. Negative three. three. Yeah. In other words, this is really an easy problem. They don't get much mm -hmm. easier than this. It's really easy to figure out where y is at its minimum. It's where I'm, I'm pointing to in my cursor. Okay. Now it's okay. all you're going to do is figure out what the x value is there. Mm -hmm. So okay. I would say this is one of the easiest problems. On yeah, easy ones. Once you understand what they're looking for. So always don't, don't assume that just because it's a middle type number like 17 that it's going to be a hard problem. This is not a hard problem. All right, let's see. Okay, 18, look at it briefly. Tell me whether it's easy, medium, or hard. Uh, I'd say medium. I might even say hard. Okay. Hmm. Let me think about this for a moment as to whether we even want to spend our time on it. If it takes me a while to figure out how to do it, let's see. What have we graphed it? That might be an actual easy way to do it. The top equation is y is less than negative x. That's a slope of minus 1 mm -hmm. plus a. So we'll call that a. Negative 1 looks like that. And it says y is less than that. So we're on that side of the line. Now, if we look at the other line, y is greater than x plus b. Mm, yeah, we'll make b right there. And that's a slope of positive 1. So that line is like that. And it's on that side. y mm -hmm. is greater. Mm-hmm. So, the only common region is that one. All right. So now what does that mean? A is greater than B. It doesn't help a lot, does it? No. Uh, B is less than A, or B is greater than B is greater A. Than a. The, the problem is I could have drawn B down below just as easily. Yeah. So there's no way that either of these can make a difference because I arbitrarily chose to draw B above A. I could have drawn it mm -hmm. down here just as easily. Okay. Yeah. Uh, man, this is getting so hard from my graph that this is definitely – a hard problem. Well, what if we use the the, the point zero zero? You're on to a good solution. Okay, here's the first thing. I got a hard problem, and here's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at variables in the question A and B, and I'm looking right. at both variables and my answer. All four answers. So this is a classic example of let's pick some numbers. Okay, so we're not going to solve this algebraically or graphically. Graphically wasn't so easy either. Mm -hmm. But we might be able to pick numbers. What can we pick for A and B? we got to pick an A and a B such that both of those are true for all x and y. Wow. Well, isn't zero zero, a, is a, isn't zero zero is a solution to the system of an, 
is a solution to the system of inequalities. So you're saying if a were zero, then y would be less than negative x. Mm -hmm. And if b were zero, y would be greater than x. First of all, there's kind of a general rule. When you're going to pick numbers, which is what I call this solution, don't pick 0 or 1. And there's a reason for that. 0 and 1 have unique properties that other numbers do not have. Okay? Okay. 1 is the only number where if you take its reciprocal, it's still 1. Yeah. Zero is the only number that you cannot divide by zero. And zero times any number is still zero. So those two numbers are not good numbers to pick. So let's not pick them. What about two and three? There you go. Let's make A and B different. Uh, two, so let's say we call A two. Mm -hmm. Three. Now, is that true? Well, we got to figure out an X. Uh, for example, in other words, this is a particularly difficult problem because even with picking numbers, you got to pick an X, and that's going to determine what Y is. So let's say yeah. X is four. Okay. So is y less than minus 2, okay? So y is less than minus 2 when x is 4. And when x is 4, y is greater than 7. Well, that doesn't make any sense. There's no way y can be less than minus 2 and also greater than 7. Mm-hmm. So, what to do next? Okay. Uh, yeah. Here's what to do next. Put a double check mark by it, meaning it's one of the most difficult problems. And depending on how you're pacing yourself through the test, if you are be behind schedule, then I would say go ahead and guess. And just from when we drew the graphs, it's pretty clear that I could have drawn the graph with A greater than B or B greater than A. So I can kind of cross out those two and guess between those two. And mm -hmm. at this point, okay. I've already spent so much time on the problem that I do not want to spend any more time on it, and yet I actually do have a pretty good guess situation. And I'm not sure which of those I would guess. Uh, probably that one right there. Yeah, I was going to say probably C, yeah. Yeah, because if I ruled out, you know, A equals minus B, perhaps... The more I look at the problem, the more I would be inclined to guess that. I don't honestly know the answer, but I kind of got a feeling it's D. The only reason I say that is if A were equal to minus B, then I change that to minus B, correct? Yeah. Now I've got Y is less than minus X plus B. And I also have y is greater than x plus b. Well, if x plus b was 3, you'd have y less than negative 3 and greater than 3. So that's hard to do. Yeah. So I would be, because I crossed out A and B, I think I can cross out D. And that yeah. has to be the answer. I would almost bet anything, even though I don't know how to solve this problem at this point. 
the process <laughs> okay. yeah. by eliminating certain answers, I've narrowed it down where C almost has to be correct. And that's the way you want to approach these. Sometimes you don't you don't have to know how to do it. So all you have to do is know how to eliminate certain answers. And I did it in this case by trying to graph it, which told me quite a bit. It told me that neither A nor B could be correct. Yeah, okay. We've got 19. Nineteen is the most common word problem you will find on the test. Oh, yes. It is a system of two equations and two unknowns. So that's what you, where you want to start. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about word problems. Everybody hates word problems. But if you start at the right place, word problems aren't that hard. It's just a question of knowing how to start. You always start at the last sentence. Always. Okay. Now, they're asking about salads. But these problems are also always two variables. So, the way you start a word problem is by defining your variables. Mm -hmm. Okay? Let's define our variables as X and Y. What's X going to be equal to? Uh, solids. Well, exactly what the question asked. But, mm -hmm. it's not just sufficient to say solids. Because salads that are there's six, six on, there's two each. things with salads. There's the number that were sold, and there's the price of each one. So what is mm -hmm. X? How many salads were sold? Yeah. Okay. The number of salads sold. And trust me, it, it doesn't hurt to spell it out. So you okay. know exactly what it is. Because there are two, two aspects to salads. There's the number sold and there's the price of each. So what's our other variable going to be? Why? Mm -hmm. What is that going to be? Um, number of drinks sold? We're selling. Besides selling. A number of dr drinks. Uh, yeah, drinks. Number of drinks sold. Number of drinks sold. Now, even though they only ask about salads, we're going to have to include this in our equations okay so now let's go back to the beginning you start with the end to define your variables and then you go back to the beginning so mm -hmm. it sells its salads for 650 it sells its drinks for two total of 209 salads and drinks tell me an equation that specifies that. Look at my variables. Look at that mm -hmm. I've underlined. Give me an equation. Okay. So 209 cells in drinks is um, equal to x plus y. Yeah. Let's keep our variables on the left side just because that's the uh, normal way to do it. In other words, this is standard format. We have x yeah. first, y second. They're both on the left side of the equation, and we have a number on the right side. That's standard format. When we go to solve this system of equations, we want it in standard format because we want to solve it by elimination, not substitution. Now, read what their revenue is for one day right there. Mm -hmm. How do you get revenue? If I'm I'm over here on the left, revenue equals what? Doesn't mm -hmm. it equal the price you get times the number of salads you sold? Yes. So tell me what the revenue equation is. Uh, revenue is equal to um, 
Jeez. Uh, eight. Well, uh, hold on. Yeah. What we six, get for salads, right? Yeah, six fifty times uh, one. Uh, uh, X. Exactly. That's why it's so important to start with these first two steps. You got to define your variables, otherwise you won't know how to write the equation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Plus what? It's not just salads that we sell. We also sell drinks. Yeah. So plus uh, two uh, plus two uh, times uh, y. Okay. Now we know what the revenue is. It's eight thirty six. So if we write mm -hmm. this in standard format, this is what we get: six point five x plus two y equals 836.50. Now, let me erase this so it's not in the way. Here's what we want to work with. That's two equations, two unknowns. Both mm -hmm. in standard <clears throat> format. Always you want to use elimination to solve these. Which variable can we eliminate quite easily? Uh, you can eliminate uh, probably y for easily. Yeah, you can't do it immediately because I got a y and a 2y. So I mm -hmm. can't add or subtract the equations and eliminate any variable. So I got to do something to equation number one first. What is it? Whenever uh, multiply you have by a system two. of equations, it never hurts to number them like this. Because what you end up with is equations all over your page. And if you don't mm -hmm. number them, you get confused. And I don't mean you, I mean everybody. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. what am I going to do to equation number one? Uh, multiply it by two. Okay. Oh, negative, so sorry, negative two. By, tell me what, go ahead, by how much, by two or negative two, which one? Uh, negative two. Okay, tell me what I get. Okay, uh, so negative two X. Okay. Um, minus two Y. Okay. Uh, equal, and then let me use my calculator real quick. Oh, that's fine. Uh, let's see. Uh, negative, uh, negative 418. Okay. Now, I'm going to run a line through that because that's no longer my equation one. Mm -hmm. Now, how do I solve that system of equations? Can I do anything to eliminate a variable now? Yes, you can easily eliminate uh, y. By doing what? Uh, they cancel each other out. Well, you have so. to add them. In other words, right, right. you are allowed to add or subtract two equations. That's pretty much it. So, yeah, so definitely add them so you can yeah. easily eliminate them. But, yeah, uh, you want to, and you're going to choose to add them. And we could subtract, but subtract doesn't eliminate a variable. So we're going to put a big plus sign right there. And now the mm -hmm. way you add these two equations that are both in standard format is you just add every piece. So what's that give us? How many X's do we have? Uh, yeah, so that would give you uh, 4.5 X. Why is um, Thus, yeah, why's out? Thus we've eliminated a variable. That's why it's called elimination. Mm -hmm. And then add those two numbers. What do you get? And 418.5. Uh, now, so do the rest of it. Actually, you know what? Don't have to do the rest of it. Well, go ahead and do it. You do kind of. Okay. They put answers close enough together that we do kind of have to do it. I'm guessing 93 okay. based on that. What's that? Yeah, it's 93. Yeah, you know it's not 105 because we're dividing 418 by 4.5. The thing is, is that because, is this a calculator section? 
I think it is, yeah. I think it is, yeah, especially when they're giving you problems like three-digit numbers divided by a fraction or a decimal. That's almost certainly going to be a calculator question. Yeah. Although notice that we really don't need the calculator. Because all we need to know is that it's certainly not over 100 because mm -hmm. the 4.5 is greater than 4.1. Right. So, and it's so far away. It's not even close. It's not like we're dividing by 4.2. If we were dividing by 4.2, I would be inclined to choose 99. But because we're dividing by 4.5, it's got to be the next 90s. It's not far enough yeah. away that it's 77. So, again, right. calculator is sometimes useful. It'll speed it up if you don't have, you know, approximation skills, but you can always do it without the calculator. Okay. They always give you enough information. Okay. All right. Now, let's see. Why is this? Yeah, it definitely is calculator. All right. Let's look at 20. First of all, determine whether or not this is one we can do or whether we can't do it. What is the red flag that tells us how to do this problem? There's one. Got to learn to uh, recognize it. P dollars. Well, there is a variable. Hold on a second. Excuse me. The flag is the following. This one will never fail you. There is a variable in the, pro, in the question. And that same variable is in every single answer. Right. Okay. What that means is, is that P can be anything. P is not defined. In other words, whatever P is, this has to work. So a really easy way to figure these out is to pick a number for P. Give me a, I won't say give me a P, but give me a P. Um... While you hold on, think about that for a second, just one minute. Sorry, my dog's having a seizure and she's right at the top of the stairs. I had to move her away from the top of the stairs. Oh, okay. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, she uh, she gets through them in about 10 minutes, but she kind of thrashes about, and my only fear is that she'll fall down the stairs, and her whole body is locked up. She'd break. Yeah, that's that would be really bad. Bones. Yeah, no, that would not be good. All right, so let's see. Give me a P. Uh, P dollars. Give me a dollar mm -hmm. amount. Don't pick zero or one. Right. Uh, six. Pick as low a number as you can possibly pick because we're going to okay. have to do some math. Oh, I see. I see. Uh, two. Pick two. Okay. Now, go through the problem and figure out what the answer is. Once you have picked a P, especially a low number P, then you'll be able to figure out what the answer needs to be. I believe, usually it works. This looks particularly difficult, but let's see. The price she paid to the cashier was $2, okay? Mm -hmm. And she had gotten a 20% discount off the price. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
So that's going to be tough to figure out what the price was, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go back and reconsider our picking of numbers. What's a better number to pick? Um, How about eight? Eight, okay. And the reason is, is what was the price of the item? If, uh, yeah, that's why sometimes when you're picking numbers, certain numbers work better than others. So okay. I'm going to call the item price 10. Okay. Right. And if you get a 20% discount on something that's priced at 10 bucks, you're only going to pay $8. Okay. I get, I see what you're doing. Okay. Okay. So. Okay, now, including an 8% sales tax on the discounted price. And they are not making this easy. Mm -hmm. So, 8 what? with is the it? sales tax. Yeah. We is, might is still like have enough information that we can figure out which of these answers is correct? Okay. Because I was going to well, say, like, go ahead, go ahead. Isn't like a sales tax? It doesn't that depend like on your state too? That's not just well, it's not consistent not across problem. the board. In this problem, the okay. sales tax is eight percent. Okay. Okay. But the thing is, is that now that complicates the problem entirely. That means our two numbers can't be ten and eight. Yeah. Because sales tax involved. So the item must have been less than 10 bucks because in other words, the price I'm paying eight bucks includes the sales tax. So the, the problem has gotten really, really complicated. So it's definitely mm -hmm. very difficult, but that doesn't mm -hmm. mean we can't make a really good educated guess. Okay. Okay. So which of the following represents the original price? in terms of P. Well, the mm -hmm. one thing we know for sure is, is the original price is greater than P, right? Right. So is A correct? No. No, can't be. Because that would make the original price less than P. Could B be correct? Just could it be correct? Yes. Yeah, if you divide 8, go ahead and use your calculator. Divide 8 by okay. 0.88. What do you get? Uh, 9.09. Okay, that doesn't sound expensive enough. Now use your calculator and do that one. What do you get? Okay. Uh, 6.9. Well, that certainly isn't correct. Right? In other words, the one thing we know for sure is that the item has to be greater than 8 bucks. Right. According to when we plug in 8 for P. Plug in 8 for P there. Tell me what you get. He's right. What do you get? Uh, $10.8. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. And even though that's greater than 8, so now we're, we're toying with 10.8 or 9.09. .09. So we've definitely mm -hmm. eliminated it to a 50-50 guess, which isn't bad on a problem with this degree of difficulty. I mean, this okay. is a hard problem, okay? Mm -hmm. But... Um, you can actually be certain if at this point you're down to those two answers and somebody says, okay, your life's at stake. You're going to die or live depending on whether you got it right or not. Yeah. Well, we can figure that out. Okay. okay. Let's try 10.8. Use your calculator. Take 20%. Of, take 80% of that. What do you get? 
Uh, 8.64. Add 8% 8 of that to that. What are you adding? Because it's an 8% sales tax, so you're going to multiply 10.8 mm -hmm. times 0 0.08. Actually, uh, so you have to do this step. No matter how much you add, mm -hmm. it's going to come up to be greater than eight bucks, right? Yeah. So that can't be right. That's the wrong answer. We only have one other answer 909. Okay. okay? So yeah. B has to be correct. Now, Let's just verify it, just so we, you know that I know what I'm talking about. Take 80% of that. What do you get? Okay. Uh, 7.2. Now take, when you add 8% sales tax, you can multiply that number by 1.08. What is that okay. equal? Uh, 7.8. Close enough. We're looking for something that is P. And the P we picked was 8. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's close enough. So I'm not sure why it's not exactly the same. Uh, mm -hmm. But nonetheless, nothing else came close. Remember what we were looking for. We were looking for one mm -hmm. of the four answers to be 8. We picked a P of 8 and an item price of 10. And we picked those numbers because it made the math really easy to do the 20% discount. And then right. we discovered, oh, my goodness, there's sales tax on top of that. Now there's almost no math that's easy to do. In other words, now even picking numbers make, is a difficult task here. I, I would have to give this problem another 10 minutes and probably go back and solve it out correctly. But yeah. only a hard, hard problem, but one that we were actually able to be quite certain of the answer, merely by eliminating mm -hmm. the answers that can't be right. Even if you have okay. to guess yeah. between B and D, that's pretty good on a hard problem, to be able to guess between two choices. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. The problem with all of this is that it took us a lot of time. We spent 10 minutes on that. Yeah. Problem. And you get an average of one minute per problem. So the yeah. other thing to remember is that every problem is worth one point. Hard problems are not worth more than easy problems. Okay. Okay. So your time is best spent on easy problems, and then medium, and then hard. If you have to guess on every single hard problem, big deal. No, no problem. You'll get a quarter of them right just by guessing. Yeah, that is true. So let's look at the next problem. Now, first thing I'm going to tell myself is this is not a hard problem. Okay. And the reason I say that, I might be wrong. I haven't read this problem yet. I might be wrong, but it's a table. And it's a lot of sentences. And a lot of sentences means it's probably not hard. Even though the previous problem yeah. had quite a few sentences also, uh, in general, the more sentences, the less hard it is. That's not what makes a problem hard. So let's look at the problem. This is another question you would get on the science part of the ACT. Mm -hmm. All right, so after you've read the paragraph, 
Mm -hmm. Now look at the table and make sure you okay. understand what the table is saying. These are dreams recalled during one week, and we have two different groups, group X and group Y. Mm -hmm. That's pretty straightforward. Notice your totals. Everyone, every table has a total column and a total row. Okay? And that number yeah. is the sum of those two. That number is the sum of those two, and the total uh, has the total number of people. So uh, the most important thing to do is to understand what you're looking at. Okay? And all of this stuff here is actually summed up in the table. There's the 100, there's the 100. So you don't necessarily have to go back and reread the thing. Pretty much everything that you're looking at in the table is talked about in the paragraph, in the first three-fourths of the paragraph. So the important oh. part is this part here. So if we choose a person at random who recalled at least one dream, that's this column right there, mm -hmm. is it not? Yeah, yeah. What is the probability? Well, first of all, what's the probability? Let, let's go through this in phases. What's the probability that a person chosen at random has at least one dream? Let's, uh, thirty. Let's yeah. talk about probability for a bit. Okay. Go ahead. At least uh, one dream. Yeah. Well, first of At all, least now, let's, start, let's start even simpler than that. Okay. What's the probability that a person has no dreams? Out of the out of group X and group Y. Of the 200 people that you interview, yeah. right. what's the probability um, that somebody would have no dreams? There are 36 of right. them. So, uh, 36 out of 200. So it's 36 divided by 200. It's yeah. always the yeah. number of successes divided by the total number of possibilities. So that number would be what? 15%? No, 18%. It is... Yep, 18%. Okay. So we understand probabilities. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. if a person is randomly chosen with at least one dream, well, how many of those are there? There's those plus those. So how many of those mm -hmm. are there? 164. So out of the 200 people, 164 of them had at least one dream, which is one to four or five or more. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, what's the probability that that belonged to the group Y? What's the sum of those two numbers? Uh, 79. So it's 79 divided by 164. Okay. Uh, okay. And you don't have to do that in your calculator. In other words, they're not looking for the number. And that's why it's always worth looking at the answers. Because if you didn't look at the answers, you'd be inclined to do mm -hmm. that in your calculator, turn it into a decimal, then you look at your answers and you see that, ah, they don't have any decimals, they got fractions. And then you mm -hmm. kind of go back to your calculator. So it's always worth seeing the answers and knowing what it is you're looking for. You're okay. looking for a ratio. And the reason yeah. is, is that that's the language of probability. The language of probability is the number of successes divided by the number of possibilities. So probability almost always gives you a ratio. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's actually pretty easy once you see yeah, it. Yeah, it is. Probability is not that hard. You just have to... To know that as a basic, that it's the number of successes divided by the number of possibilities. And then this problem is still hard because it would have been maybe medium if they'd have said how many, what percentage of the people 
don't have any dreams or what what percentage of group Y don't have any dreams. But they made it more difficult because you have to add up those columns all together. Mm -hmm. Dream or more. So they made it about as tough as it could be. Uh, yeah, that's true. So it's definitely a hard problem. But okay. one that, that you can still get. Hard problems don't necessarily mean you can't get them. Right. So... Ben, yeah. okay. I, hold on one second. Let me just check right. one thing here. I got to check my schedule next week. Um, we're good to go. Hold on. Yeah, eight, two weeks from now we're good to go. Yep, I'm fine. The rest of the prep period. Perfect. I'll talk to you next Saturday. All right, great. Thank you.